How's it going everybody? This is RBT coming at you with my National Signing Day recap video. I know National Signing Day was like <clears throat> like a week ago, but my I recorded it on my Android and I can't figure out how to get a video onto my computer and the upload speed to my for my internet is really 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 slow. So if I try to upload like a video it says about a 400 400 megabytes, which that video would probably be, probably take me about five or six hours. So I didn't really want to go through that when I can just go on here and hop on and record it straight from my webcam. And it's been a while since I made a video, but one of the reasons is as I got a new laptop for Christmas, and I hate the way that I look on it, and I hate the way that it sounds. And I gave my mother my old laptop, and she uses this one, but I like this one better. So. I guess I'm just using it now while she's away. But I'm just gonna run down. I I was hitting it spot on on the video. I was driving home and I was hitting it spot on. Everything I thought I could think of all the recruits. And now it's been a week and I just I, it's kind of dropped off my mind. So I'm gonna just I'm first of all I'm just gonna go down the list of recruits we got signed. Ron Anderson, linebacker out of Daphne, Alabama. Dakota Ball, really underrated defensive tackle out of Lindale, Georgia. Dion Ballou, he committed a few, two years ago, I believe. He's a cornerback, and he went to – did not qualify out of high school, and he went to a community college, a two-year JUCO. And he should compete for playing time right away as long uh, – right along Travell Dixon. The I'm not sure if Tra Travell Dixon's going to play corner or safety, but he's going to play next year. He's really talented. Uh, another That's another JUCO prospect. I think he was second in the nation, I believe. Second or third overall Juco prospect in the nation. He picked Alabama over Florida State. That's Travell Dixon. Next, you got Chris Black. Guy reminds me of Marquise Mays. A little bit taller, though, about two inches taller. But he plays the same way. He's a four-star wide receiver out of Jacksonville, Florida. Then Landon Collins. As you know, the five-star defensive back out of Dutchtown, Louisiana. Gesmar, Louisiana. This high school is Dutchtown. It was about 25 minutes away from the LSU campus when we stole him out of there. I'll talk about that in a minute. He's he could play right away. Him with uh, him and alongside with Hashan Clinton Dix, who's a five-star from last year, who's going to play safety. Uh, moving on, Amari Cooper, the wide receiver from Northwestern, the high school in Miami that everybody hears about year in and year out. That's always loaded with talent. If you watch the Under Armour game, I believe it was, or it might have been the. I think it was the Under Armour game. He had a bunch of good. I think he brought a punt back and he had a touchdown catch. He had a, he played a heck of a game. A good wide receiver that could come in and start right away, possibly if we needed it. Denzel Duvall, another guy we pulled out of Louisiana, out of LSU's territory, four-star linebacker. Like I said, Travell Dixon, the defensive back out of. He went to Eastern Arizona Junior College. I knew he was from Arizona, but I didn't. Know exactly where, but he could come in. Reminds me a lot of Dequan Menzi. I'm not sure if they're going to either put him at, like I said, either safety or corner. Kenyon Drake, um, which who is part of the best running back class in the country, in my opinion, with Kenyon Drake and TJ Yeldon, the five star we got, we has switched from Auburn, Alabama, that everybody heard everything about. Kenyon Drake. He was the Gatorade Player of the Year. I'm not, I'm not sure if that was just for the state of Georgia, which is a state that's always loaded with talent, or if that was for the National Gatorade Player of the Year. But either either way, that's a great award. And this guy, he could be end up being better than T.J. Yeldon because he has some talent. They both are a little bit taller. Both run a little bit upright. T.J. Yeldon a little bit more than Kenyon Drake, but they both could turn out to prove to be Amazing running backs, and just add to the, the tandem of running backs we've had for the past three or four years with Glenn Coffey, Mark Ingram, then we have Mark Ingram, Trent Stinn this year, Trent Stinn, Eddie Lacy. Our next year we're gonna have a, we're gonna be absolutely loaded on on offense, but that's another video. That's that's needs to be saved for another video later on. Yeah, that's Kenyon Drake, uh, Kurt Freetag, a guy from Buford, Georgia, tight end. He committed alongside with his. Fellow linebacker Dylan Lee, a really, really talented guy. Both out of uh, Buford High School in Buford, Georgia. Both really talented. Kurt Freetag could 
play early on, maybe possibly as early as his sophomore year because Michael Williams will be a senior next year. He's really talented, 6'3", 245, pretty big guy. Brandon Green, a guy, a lineman out of Georgia, four-star. Uh, he's really big, either play tackle or guard. He, at the end, was – he had been committed to Alabama for a while, but it, he, Georgia got back in the mix, and he came down to signing day, and he stuck with his commitment to Alabama. So, yeah. Adam Griffiths, the kicker. From Cal, another guy from Georgia. A lot of our prospects lately have been from Georgia. Georgia is really it's not the biggest state, but it usually always has a bunch of talent. And that's when Georgia's problems been in the past. They have not been able to keep that talent in the state of Georgia. They either lose them to Auburn, Alabama, Florida. Don't even know why I said Auburn first. Hey, like my shirt. If you can see it, 14 national champions, championships. My girlfriend got me this shirt. I gotta wear it to church tonight. Uh. But yeah, Adam Griffith, hopefully he can come in, and as you know, we have the kick and woes. Hopefully he can come in and be the opposite of what Cade Foster was. Cade Foster was like the fifth-ranked kicker in the country. Everybody thought he was going to be a wonderful kicker because he was a linebacker specimen playing kicker. <coughs> Excuse me. And we know how that turned out. But from what I've seen, he has really good highlights, but so did Cade Foster. So it's really hard to to judge or evaluate a kicker coming out of high school with the the T that they use, but it is what it is. Caleb Gutledge, a guy that I believe could be that's kinda underrated in this class from Prattville, Alabama, six four, two fifty five. Played defensive end in high school. I think they're he's coming more like come in more as an offensive lineman, either a guard or a tackle. He's a guy to look out for. Tyler Hayes, I think, out of the linebacking class, which is the best linebacking class in the country, I believe he is the the most underrated out of the four. He's a just really athletic, uh, just probably the most underrated linebacker in the class. This linebacking class was one of the sickest I've ever seen. I mean, when you get down to the signing day, and you're offering one of the better players in the state, Quan Alexander, a gray shirt offer because you've already – Got too many linebackers that are better than him. You're sitting pretty. And we have the line, the number two player in the nation committed for next year, Reuben Foster, along with the number one player in the nation, Robert Kim Dyke. I have no clue how to pronounce his last name. But that, I've heard a lot of rumors about Robert Nick, Kim Dyke is, has Alabama leading for him. And that will be sick if they you know, both committed. Like I said, this uh, it's time for another video. Brandon Hill, don't honestly don't too, know too much about him, but he's a lineman out of Tennessee. Uh, Cyrus Jones, athlete, committed at the Under Armour game right before Cyrus after right before Landon Collins did. Cyrus Jones brought I think Cyrus Jones was the one that brought back a punt. Cause I remember I tweeted about it that night within like a two or three minute span. Two guys who committed to Alabama in the fourth quarter brought back a punt return and brought back an interception return. That was pretty sick. Cyrus Jones, you play the receiver or safety. He's fast as lightning. Um, the, uh, Rivals.com has a, has him listed as an athlete, but he can play a bunch of positions. Now for the two defensive tackles that committed on sign of day, Corwin Curvin and Dalvin Tomlinson. Couldn't think of their names. The thing, the, the problem I have with this is we had Darius Phylon, and they all have all heard about this. He got a gray shirt offer on the last day. He said he didn't want it. I'll, I'll talk about that after I finish the list. Corwin Curvin, he's came down to Alabama and Virginia Tech for him, committed on signing day. Came as a surprise to everybody because we believe we were only going to take two defensive tackles on signing day, and we got these two guys. They're both top 200 players overall in the country. They're, they both are really talented and come in and compete for playing time uh, with the departures of the departure of Je Josh Chapman and Nick Gentry, Jesse Williams, I think will move over to tackle this year. I'm not positive on that, but they should be competing for playing time with Corin Curvin, Dalvin Thomason, and Darian Lake. And I think there's one other guy. Can't Dakota Ball. All will be competing for playing time in the tackle position. Uh, let's see. I said Darian Lake at defensive tackle. 
there, Dalvin Thompson, another defensive tackle. Dylan Lee, the linebacker, along with his teammate, Kirk Freetag. He's uh, he's white. <laughs> That's something you, you don't really see, especially on, um, I don't think, I think the last white linebacker to play for Alabama was, was, uh, Corey Reamer. I think he, he I think his last game was in 08 or 09, but, uh, He's just another part of that linebacker class, one of the sickest, the sickest linebacking class in the country for this year, if not all time. Next, you got the quarterback out in Texas, Alec Morris. He reminds me of Ben Roethlisberger. Every he's six three, two thirty five right now, so he could gain a few pounds. He's probably gonna get a lot bigger. He's a really strong arm, really accurate, very underrated. His only he was committed to Wake Forest before Alabama offered him, and his only offers are that are listed are from Wake Forest and North Texas along with Alabama and he he switched his commitment from Wake Forest to Alabama I think he'll he'll be a really good quarterback well hopefully anyway he'll compete with Philip Sims and Blake Sims and Philip Eli when AJ McCarney leaves the draft early next year or leaves the senior year which I don't think he'll leave early but Reggie Raglan, my favorite linebacker in this class. The dude's an absolute beast. He reminds me of Rolando McClain every single way, every single area. He's 6'4", 245, and he's only going to get bigger. The only problem is you don't want to get too big, which takes away a lot of your speed. I've been following this guy since his end of his sophomore, early junior year. He's an absolute stud. He'll play pretty early on. Geno Smith, he's been the... Biggest trash talker of the class, I guess you could say. I've been following him on Twitter. Trash talks every day. He, tries to, he was the biggest recruiter of this class. Uh, he'll be a he'll be a pretty good player. I think it's kind of funny how his name is Geno Smith and the quarterback for West Virginia's name is Geno Smith. We almost got Geno Smith, which we knew as Eugene Smith before he went to West Virginia. He was going to commit to Alabama, and then Sarge Jackson committed, so that backed him off. So who knows? We could be playing with Geno Smith right now. Um, who knows how far he could could have take this? Took us, take this. F. Alfonso Taylor, uh, he was a Florida State commitment at one time. I believe he was. F. I think he was. He was either a Florida State commitment one time or consider an Alabama Florida State. Uh, nonetheless, he's an Alabama commitment right now. He'll clog the middle. He's six six three forty. He's a huge guy. I think he's already enrolled, but he'll be. A, I think yeah, I think he's enrolled now. He'll be a good player. Eddie Williams, the he came out of high school. He played safety his whole high school career, and he said he's coming out as a wide receiver because he wants to add depth to the. He wants to add height, depth, if that makes sense, at the wide receiver position. He believes he could play right away. Some people say he could be the next Julio Jones. I don't necessarily see that because I mean he didn't play wide receiver really at all his whole high school career. He was strictly a safety. And normally when you play safety, it's because you don't have good enough hands to play wide receiver. But I'll let Nick Saban decide that because, <laughs> you know, I'm just a little RBT. But if you have three five-stars, which would be Hoshon Clinton Dix from last year's class, Landon Collins, and Eddie Williams all in the same defensive backfield, same secondary, that will be one of the best secondaries in the country. So I'm, at, I'm pulling for Eddie Williams to play safety eventually, but... It is what it is. And finally, how long is this video? 14, god dang, minutes. TJ Yeldon, the, water, the running back out of Daphne, Alabama. Uh, you all know him. Reminds me of Darren McFadden. And he's, he's going to be a good one. He could probably get a few carries next year along with Eddie Lacy, Jocelyn Fowler. My bold prediction is that, well, this was at the beginning of the last year. Trent Richardson, Eddie Lacy, and Jocelyn Fowler, and Jocelyn Fowler, all start for an NFL team one time. My favorite running backs out of the ones that are on the team now is my favorite running back is Jocelyn Fowler. Dude's an absolute stud. Six, six, one, six, two, two fifty. Can do a backflip, flat footed. Absolute stud. And runs probably a four six forty, but it doesn't matter when he can drag ninety people at one time. But yeah, before my dog starts barking, 
I'm just in it now. Next time, guys, roll tide.